I would like to speak to you this afternoon and focus on the text, the New Testament text that we have read. And I would like to speak to you on the topic of mountaintop experiences and deep valley life. Mountaintop experiences and deep valley life. During my trip to South Africa, I had the privilege to visit the town that I grew up in. It's in the far north of South Africa. And during that time, <clears throat> I visited our old house. I visited my father's grave. I paid a visit to some old spots dear, uh, all over the town that I was used to uh, go to. And it was interesting to see how the places have changed throughout the years. I haven't been there for a very, very long time. And one visit that I uh, paid was a visit to our old church. Now, the church I've been to, uh, I grew up in, <clears throat> well, I knew all the people many years ago. But during my visit there, I learned that most of them had passed away or have moved away and that only a few remained. So it was quite odd <clears throat> to also meet my uh, Sunday school teacher and to realize that I sat in her class 43 years ago. Well, that was quite a sort of calculation. It reminds me how old I am. But sitting in the church, <clears throat> it was sort of a nostalgic trip, thinking of all the things that happened there. My father uh, was one of the volunteers building the church. And uh, I still, today I can see him in my mind sitting on top of the, uh, of the roof, uh, laying tiles and busy doing there. It was quite a sight that time as well. But one vivid memory of my church past was their love for conferences and church retreats. We had that every year, two to three times. In the winter, we went up to Zanin. It's a town in the very far northwestern part, or northeastern part, sorry, of, of South Africa, and it is very hot there throughout the year. It is in the bushveld. And so every winter, we had a conference there. Every summer, we had a conference in the south where it's not so hot. But Conferences and church camps, retreats, youth camps, were part of our church culture. And those were the mountaintop times. Those were the times that I remember you went to church the whole day. It is church, 7 o'clock in the morning, there's a prayer meeting, 9 o'clock, the first service, and then you just go out of the first service, drink tea, and then there's a next service, so two services, at least three services before lunch. Well, uh, that, that's, quite, that's quite a thing. And then after lunch, there was also a mid-afternoon uh, service. Well, during that service, they had to have very... Uh, uh, Staunch preachers who can do the preaching uh, with fire and so on because everybody was falling asleep. And then we had night service. So you can imagine during a whole week, just service after service that you, uh, that, that, well, you can not be uh, untouched uh, with that. So I remember that as part of our church culture. And after those conferences, we went home and you were on a high. I was always on this high. I, I thought, well, I was on the mountaintop. It was, it was a time of refreshing revival and it was wonderful. So I can still remember the afterglow of that experience. The problem was usually that after those wonderful mountaintop experiences, you had to come down to reality. And that's where things got rough. Because you cannot live on the mountaintop. 
You cannot live on a high. You have to come down. And it was the same here in Mark 9, also recorded in the other two Synoptic Gospels. There was this wonderful mountaintop experience Jesus had with three of his disciples. They've never experienced something like this ever before. What is a mountaintop experience? Let's quickly look at that. I don't know if the phrase mountaintop experience was coined because of the story of the transfiguration or if it simply describes what kind of experience those disciples of Jesus had. Either way, we can describe it as follows. A mountaintop experience is what we call any experience, religious otherwise, that is uplifting, inspiring, life-changing, exhilarating, illuminating. It's those experiences that you have where there's a very pe peculiar uh, raise or, or time in your life of meeting God. Time in your life that you really experience the presence of God in a very, very specific way, in a very unique way. Your mountaintop might not be the same as my mountaintop. But you know those experiences, maybe the first time you met the Lord. Maybe those are those times in your life where you really experience God's presence in a very, very tangible way, in a wonderful way. It's those times that God just shows you some, some hint of His glory. Wonderful times. That's exactly what Peter, James, and John felt as they went on this rather weird journey with Jesus. It's significant. I think that they went up to the mountain to pray. And as they prayed, two powerful leaders, Elijah and Moses, appeared to Jesus. And there they heard the voice that says, This is my son, my chosen. Listen to him. Wow. Wow. Their lives could never have been the same. It was a life-changing experience. And no wonder that they want to build some uh, places there, some make it a habitation, make it some permanent uh, retreat center. No. Maybe you had some of those experiences in your life. We you experienced the glory of God so, so close to you. And it changed your life. Now those mountaintop experiences, I think, are necessary. I think those experiences, those coming close to God, is, those experiences are really necessary. And those are moments of grace granted to us by God. Moses had his on Mount Sinai. Can you think what went through his head, through his emotions, when he met God? The problem is that people get hooked on those experiences. The problem is that like Peter and James and John, we want to build some huts there. We want to stay there. Some people get fixed on that. They get hooked on that, want to stay there. Don't want to come down to the valley. So they look for better, for more intense experiences like that. And their whole religion, their whole practice of, of Christianity, their whole spiritual life is focused on new experiences. And sometimes... It gets to a quick fix moment or good feeling moment. They don't want to go down to the valleys. And it's so sad that sometimes in churches they specialize in those quick fix mountaintop experiences and offer new experiences as quickly as the old experiences have worn out. You see, Jesus went up to the mountain 
And there on the mountain, that mountaintop experience was gearing him, was equipping him, was making him ready because down in the valley there was a cross waiting for him. Down in the valley there's a cross. Down in the valley there's reality. And those experiences, those times of closeness to God, those times on the mountaintop, those are the times that, that prepare us for those times down in the valley because we live in the valley. We live down in the deep valley at times. When they went down, after this wonderful experience, they encounter hopelessness, faithlessness, doubt, despair. They in the deep valley, they encounter everything that they have left before they went up. It was the same. The only thing that has changed was what happened inside of them. A revival, regeneration, renewal. That's what mountaintops are for. Those close experiences with God is where we experience God in us, through us, God around us, God that says to us, I am with you. But that is only to help us getting through the times, those times of normality where things are normal like every other day down in the valley. And therefore, in the third place, mountain top, tops prepare us for the deep valleys. Jesus, for him, it was the cross, not many days later. You see, Jesus came down the mountain with a glow that embraced people and made them feel loved and accepted and cared for. Moses came down from the mountain and there was this visible glow on his face. True mountaintop experiences are never used as clubs to try to convince other people that my religious experience is more authentic than theirs. Mountaintop experiences transforms us into servants of God. You see, there's an old Chinese saying that says, there are many paths to the top of the mountain, but the view is always the same. Oh, on the mountain, it's wonderful. But the view from there is in the valley. The view from the mountain is on the valley. For Moses, he had still years of desert wanderings ahead of him along with the Hebrew people who were filled with complaints, questions, and doubts. But his encounter with God gave him a strength that nothing could shake. Jesus met Moses, represented of the law. He met Elijah, that's a prophet. So he was equipped, a strength. He, that encounter had set him for the cross. To conclude, it would be nice if all life could be mountaintop experiences. But people don't live on the tops of mountains. People live in the valleys, where the ground is fertile, where things grow and flourish, but also where things go wrong, where things are not mountaintop things. So my prayer today, my prayer for us as an English ministry in this time of Lent is simply this. Lord, give us enough mountaintops 
to face the valleys with confidence and power. Lord, give us enough mountaintops to face the cross. That's what Lent is all about. Amen.